My name is Joanne D. Valdez from BSTM Type B. I will be discussing about cultural heritage. Cultural heritage is an expression of the ways of living developed by a community and passed on from generation to generation, including customs, practices, places, objects, artistic expression, and values. Culture is the backbone of every nation around the world and developed naturally in the lives of human beings. One of the importance of cultural heritage is that it connects people in terms of social values, beliefs, religion, and customs sold in this way. We easily identify others with similar background. Types of cultural heritage Number one, built environment. It is human-made surroundings that provide the setting of human activity. The example are buildings, townscapes, archaeological remains. Number two, Natural environment, non-human made surroundings and conditions in which all living and non-living things exist on Earth. The examples are rural landscape, coast and shorelines, agricultural heritage. The last is artifacts. It is an object made by a human being. The examples are books and documents, objects and pictures. Good day everyone! And now that my group mates are done discussing what cultural heritage is and the other tangible cultural heritages, today I am with you to do a brief discussion of what are intangible cultural heritages. Let's get to it. So what is the meaning of intangible? The first word. So intangible means something you can grasp or touch something that does not have any physical presence. So now that we know what intangible means, we can narrow it down of what ICH means or intangible cultural heritages. I know it's long, that's why they say ICH. So ICH includes traditions, um, living expressions that are passed down from generation to generation, things that are valuable, things that are priceless within a particular community. Now that we're done with the definition, I think it's time we go on to the history. Let's get to it! So the first record of ICH here in the Philippines was in 2003 when the National Commission of Culture and the Arts did a formal deposit of this convention during the August of 2006. So, what did they do? Well, their main objective was safeguarding intangible cultural heritages here in the Philippines. These included identifying and documenting ICH elements. Their other purpose was safeguarding and promoting viable ICH. Last is fostering scientific, technical, and artistic studies, which is focused on providing technical assistance and training in the field of the ICH. So currently, the Philippines has a total of three elements inscribed in the UNESCO representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. These are... And first, we have the Tarangan Epic of the Maranao people of Lake Lanao. Second is the Hudhud Chants of the Ifugao. Third and the last one is the Punuk Festival, which is also included in Ifugao. It's really hot here in the Philippines, right? So that concludes my brief discussion of what ICH is and if you want it longer, 
intangible cultural heritages. Once again, my name is Janice Matthew Nelson de la Cruz Aguilar from Team 5B, signing off. Later. I got brides in Atlanta, Tinted the lean in the family, credit cards and the scammers, hitting the licks in the van. Legacy. So hi guys, this is Kelvinis Guerra from TM5B. Ngayon pag-uusapan natin kung ano nga ba ang intangible heritage. May mga kasama po tayo ngayon, tatanungin po natin sila kung ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng intangible heritage. Wow! Tol, para sa'yo, ano ba ang intangible heritage? Wala akong idea kasi ngayon lang pumasok sa isipan kung ano ba talaga yung intangible heritage. Ano ba talaga yun? Mamaya explain ko sa'yo kung ano yan. Sige, sige. Balik po tayo ngayon at parang hindi yata maganda yung suot ko so magpapalit muna ako. Be right back! Bye! 5 minutes later. So hi guys, ayan na pagpalit na tayo. So ngayon pag-uusapan na natin kung ano nga ba ang intangible heritage. Tara, pag-usapan natin 'yan. Intangible heritage is opposite of tangible. So ibig sabihin pala noon is kung ang tangible is nahahawakan, edi yung intangible hindi nahahawakan. Oh, sige, para mas maintindihan mo, i-explain ko sa iyo 'yan. Intangible heritage is not a physical or concrete item. Intangible heritage is that which exists intellectually in the culture. According to UNESCO, intangible heritage is the totality of tradition-based creation of a cultural community expressed by a group of individuals and recognized as reflecting the expectation of the community. The hood hood is recited and chanted among the Ifugao only during three occasions. The harvesting of wedding rice, the funeral rites, and the bone washing bogwa, bogwa ritual guys. The hood hood is a celebration of heroes, wealth, and culture. It's pagmamano. Pagmamano is similar to hand kissing. It is performed by a person giving their greeting by bowing down toward the person or the elder or taking his hand or her hand, pressing it on the forehead like this. Wow! Tagging rituals and games in the rice farming cultures of East Asia and Southeast Asia are enacted among communities to ensure abundant harvest and prosperity. One is Dadarangin. Nadarangin is an ancient epic song that encompasses a wealth of knowledge of the Maranao people who live in the Lake Lanao region of Mindanao. Last but not the least, the Pahiyas Festival. The Pahiyas Festival is celebrating to give thanks to the patron of St. Farmer's San Isidro Labrador for their bountiful harvest. Hi, I'm Jack Villanueva and I'm here to share with you what I learned about intangible tourism. Intangible heritage tourism, known as the practices, representations, knowledge, skills, as well as the objects, instruments, artifacts, and cultural places, associated there with the communities and groups, and in some cases, such for us Filipinos, locals recognize their visitors as part of their culture, and also task promoting respects as saying po or opo or doing the manipul gesture to the elders. Also a part of intangible tourism, is the festivals from different places where traditional dances and using art as their own costumes is being shown. Hi guys! Mabuhay! I'm Nicole Ann R. Patag from BSTM PIB. For this vlog, I'm going to tackle what is the meaning of tangible heritage and what are the tangible heritage sites in the Philippines. Tangible heritage means physical, touchable, concrete, or visible. And also a physical artifacts or objects that significant to archaeology and architecture. Hmm. Oh, you're here. Now, let's move on to the tangible heritage sites in the Philippines. Let's go! Number 1. The Rice Terraces in Cordillera. The Ipigao Rice Terraces are the priceless contributions of Philippine ancestors to humanity. It built 2,000 years ago and passed on from generation to generation. Number 2. The Cali Crisologo. Cali Crisologo is a 15th century Spanish street in Vigan, Alacoser considered to be one of the heritage sites in the Philippines. Number 3. The San Agustin Church The San Agustin Church, also known as the Immaculate Conception Parish, is a Roman Catholic church 
and located in the city of Intramuros in Manila. The church is to be known the oldest church made of a stone in the country. And for number four, the Manila Cathedral. The cathedral served both as the prime basilica of the Philippines and the highest seat of the archbishop in the country. It's the final resting place for former prelates who have served the Archdiocese of Manila. For number five, the Tubatari. In December 1993, the UNESCO declared the Tubatahiri National Park as a World Heritage Site as a unique example of an outer rift and with a very high density of marine species. Number 6. Espolarium. Espolarium is a Latin word referring to the basements of Roman Colosseums where the fallen and dying gladiators are dumped and devoid of their worldly possessions. Number 7. Rizal Park, also known as Planeta Park. Manila's iconic 58 hectare park is considered as one of the most historical places in Manila because this is where Jose Rizal was executed on December 30, 2026, the day that led to a revolution. And last but not the least, the Bahag. Bahag is a long road commonly used by the Ifugao people and other indigenous tribes in the Cordilleras region in northern Luzon. Usually rub from behind with a longer piece of cloth, drop down the middle front. And that's it guys! I hope may natutunan kayo mula sa magandang tourist and student from the University of the East BST and Thai B. And please don't forget Click the notification bell and subscribe to my YouTube blog. Thank you for watching. Bye. See you. Magandang araw sa lahat. Ako nga pala si Loring Jofred S. Estuya. At ngayon ay tatalakayin natin kung ano nga ba ang Tangible Heritage Tourism. Tara! Kayo ba? Nakakita na ba kayo ng Tangible Heritage Tourism? Nakikita ba natin sila? Ay nangahawakan. Baka naman nakakain natin ang Tangible Tourism. Wow! In other words, Tangible Tourism means physical, perceptible, at touchable. So, ang mga intangible tourism ay nakahawakan. Nakikita din natin at minsan nasa paligid lang natin. Di lang natin napapansin. Malay nyo, ang tangible heritage tourism ay nasa paligid nyo lang. Pwede rin yung mga lugar na pinuntahan nyo dati at pupuntahan pa sa susunod na pagkalaktay. Examples of tangible heritage tourism na architecture ay ang mga places katulad ng San Agustin Church, Rizal Park, Kari Crisologo na matatagpuan sa vegan at Panawi Rice Terraces naman na matatagpuan sa Ifugao. O ba mga lugar yun at nakikita natin sila at physical sila. So sila ay mga bahagi ng Tangible Heritage Tourism. Tangible Tourism is not only limited to the places but also pwede rin ito sa mga arts tulad ng spolarium, tulad ng mga pin pintura nila ng mga ating national artists at pwede rin yung mga nandiyan lang sa ano kalye, yung mga calligraphy at public art. Isa rin yun sa mga heritage tangible tourism. Siyempre, kung may pintura, meron din naman kasuotan. Alam nyo ba, ang bahag ay galing sa Ifugao, Ifugao region na kung saan ito ay nagpapakita ng kanilang kultura. At hindi lang yun. Marami pa na nakikita natin sa ating paaaraw-araw na buhay ang heritage tangible tourism. Malay nyo, meron kayong tangible heritage yan sa bahay nyo. Tingnan nyo lang naman ike. Sana ay may tutunan tayo kung ano nga ba ang tangible heritage tourism. At dapat lagi natin itong ingatan, palagaan, at paunla rin. Dahil sabi nga natin, ang sariling atin ay dapat paunla rin at ingatan para sa iyo sa sulit pang generasyon. Dahil hindi naman tayo nang kinabahang dito. Pati rin sila at para rin sa ating kinabukasan. Maraming salamat sa pakikinig at sana may natutunan kayo. Paalam! Good day everyone! 
I am Patricia Ann and in this video, I will be sharing with you what is tangible cultural heritage and some of its examples. According to UNESCO, tangible cultural heritage refers to physical artifacts produced, maintained, and transmitted intergenerationally in a society. It includes artistic creations, built heritage such as buildings and monuments, and other physical or tangible products of human creativity that are invested with cultural significance in a society. In the Philippines, we all know that it has so much to offer. Everyone should see our pristine beaches, natural attractions, cultural and historical places. Now, let's talk about some of the most visit UNESCO World Heritage Sites in our country. First is the Church of Santo Tomas de Villanueva in Miagao, Iloilo. This church is known for its fortress Baroque style and did you know that this church has already survived typhoons, earthquakes, and two fires? Yes, you heard it right. Next, we have the historic city of Vigan, located in Ilocos Sur. It is the best preserved example of a planned Spanish colonial town in Asia, having been founded in the 16th century. Of course, we have the Pauay Church, also known as the Church of San Agustin, located in Ilocos Norte. This is one of the most well-known earthquake baroque style structures in the country with the major emphasis being earthquake resistance. Let's now move on to Palawan's Puerto Princesa Subterranean River National Park. It is famous for its breathtaking limestone karst landscape, pure natural beauty with rare animals. It is also regarded as one of the world's most beautiful cave system. Finally, in Ifugao province, we have the rice terraces of the Philippine Cordilleras. A thousand years ago, this divine living cultural landscape was created. Fun fact, if you are an avid fan of Marvel, this is one of the settings of the movie Avengers Infinity War. This is what tangible cultural heritage is all about. I am hopeful that we will be able to preserve our country's cultural assets. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Hello, good afternoon. I am Jella Erika C. Avena, a tourism student at University of Texas. I would like to share you about the importance of heritage sites and why we should preserve it. And here are the five reasons why. First, evolution of human consciousness is a continuous process. People should always be aware about our surroundings. There should also be a continuous understanding in order to have an ideal society. Second, we are not born capable of judging fairly and wisely. However, learning about various culture helps us to be a good global citizen. Third, every historical site has an important story to tell. These stories have inspired many people to strengthen their convictions and commitment to fight injustice and oppression. Fourth, heritage sites are our connection to the past. This, this proves that the existence of our ancestors. And last but not the least, heritage sites are good for economics because these flows can be beneficial by, by creating employment and revenues. If we don't have heritage sites here in the Philippines, it means we don't have our own culture, identity, traditions, and evidence from the past. So that is why it is important for the people to know what we are and what we have. That is all. Thank you. Hello guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I am Andrea Hermono and I'm about to share with you guys what is the importance of heritage sites. Heritage is important because in helping shape our identity and our heritage becomes part of what we are. Our expression of this identity shows others what we value, it highlights our values and priorities. Our heritage is our inheritance, what the past has conceded to us, what we value in the present, and what we choose to preserve for future generations. Our heritage comprises the tangible, our historical sites, buildings, monuments, objects, and museum artifacts and archives. 
the natural. Our waterways, landscapes, woodlands, bogs, uplands, native wildlife, insects, plants, trees, birds, and animals. The intangible are customs, sports, music, dance, folklore, crafts, skills, and knowledge. Preserving our heritage is important because a local heritage project can be much more than just preserving and protecting artifacts of the past. An important part of the Heritage Council's work is to encourage local communities to take the responsibility for and participate in the development and conservation of their heritage. Projects to enhance local heritage have to the potential to re-energize neglected areas and provide opportunities for local people to review, re-engage, and reinterpret their heritage. Such projects help generate a greater sense of pride and belonging in the local area through increased participation and sheer enjoyment. Crucially, maintaining and enhancing our heritage provides a basis for local economic development and innovation in tourism, agriculture, entertainment, education, and business generally. Importance of our heritage sites are its value and impact on tourism sites. Often their visit is to learn to explore the history of a place they're visiting. It's also one of the most important parts of a tourism spot. Because of this, you will know how the habits, beliefs of the people left here. It will be fun to learn them. It's more fun or exciting to go somewhere if you know a lot of new knowledge to learn. Heritage sites are the main benefits that provide in the place the people who benefit and use it. can provide jobs to the local and even the municipalities and get to know their place better not only in the Philippines but around the world with the help of heritage sites. Heritage sites is the backbone of every nation around the world. Culture or heritage was developed in the lives of human beings. It provides individuals with an automatic sense of un unity and belongingness. My name is Janine and J. Janisho, a third year college student from University of the East Manila, currently taking BS Tourism Management, and I'm going to talk about the economic benefits of cultural and heritage tourism. First, it helps us to preserve the cultural heritage. With culture as an instrument, it facilitates harmony and understanding among people. Second, it injects new money into the economy with the help of the tourist who visits the sites. Third, it creates new jobs, businesses, events and attractions, thus helping diversify the local economy. The historical heritage is not only for the beautification of the location, it also helps the locals for their everyday lives. Mabuhay! Hi, my name is Erica Ibison, third year college student and I'm currently taking BS Tourism Management from University of the East Manila. So now I'm going to talk about economic benefits of cultural and heritage tourism. So for the fourth one, it supports small businesses and enables them to expand. Business owners can open their business nearby the site and they can benefit from this site to increase their income and also their business can be known for many tourists. And next one is to, is to promote the active preservation and protection of important local resources. So it helps encourage a culture of preservation and it helps to encourage local residents and visitors to be mindful about their impact on the natural and built environment. Good morning everyone, I'm Mary Ann Ileto and I will be talking about the social benefits of cultural and heritage tourism. But first, for a brief definition of cultural heritage, it refers to the cultural aspects like heritage sites, monuments, buildings, traditions, customs, and beliefs which are considered vital to be preserved for future generations. Now, the first social benefit of cultural and heritage tourism is that the UNESCO or the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization now recognizes intangible cultural heritage as being as important buildings, wherein 
not only tangible heritage, which are the buildings, monuments, physical artifacts, paintings, objects, or architectures, like the Banawi Rice Terraces, are being recognized, but also the intangible heritage, which are the customs, beliefs, traditions, practices, like for example is the Pagmamano, a sign of respect for the elders, and activities like festivals or rituals being performed by the locals, which are part of the culture. The second one is that it promotes a positive behavior. Since our culture is showed to the tourists or to the people from different nationalities and also being shared to them and letting them experience and appreciate that this is part of our traditions, customs, values, and beliefs. Thus, it will stimulate respect and understanding from other different cultures and it would promote peace and understanding between the locals and the tourists. The last one is that it helps improve the community's image and pride because culture and heritage serves as our sense of identity and it tells a lot about our history, the stories from the past and how we were able to conquer the challenges that were faced by our ancestors. Therefore, we must protect, preserve, sustain, and promote our cultural heritage to and for our future generations. Builds opportunities for healthy and useful community, relationship, and partnership. The second one is provide researchers educational and work placement opportunities for students. This is especially needed by the students and they will have even more enough knowledge about the tourist destination and the tourist historical places itself. The third one is create enjoyable opportunities for both local residents and visitors attracted to the cultural, arts, history, and preservation. To travel to experience the places, artifacts, and activities that authentically represents the history and represents the past and present, including cultural, historical, and natural resources. Good day everyone, this is Daniel Nikolai from TM5B and I will be discussing some from the heritage programs of the government. First is the Department of Tourism. It is a primary government agency that is mandated to encourage, promote, and develop tourism as a major socio-economic activity to generate foreign currency and local employment. The second is the UNESCO World Heritage and Sustainable Tourism Program. World Heritage properties are important travel destinations that is unique, natural, and cultural wonders represent our past and present. If this were managed properly, it has a great potential impact for local economic development and long-term sustainability. Good day! I am Christopher and we will be exploring some of the heritage programs of the government. Let's start, shall we? First, we have the Philippine Cultural Education Program or the PCEP or PCEP. It seeks to develop among Filipinos greater awareness, understanding, and appreciation of their culture and arts towards the evolution of a consciousness that will improve the quality of their lives. Here are some example photos. Next one, we have the Heritage Conservation Society, or the HCS. It is a non-stop, non-profit organization advocating the protection and preservation of our built heritage, cultural and historical sites, and settings. Feel free to cite the following photos. Lastly, we have the World Travel and Tourism Council, or the WTPC. It is a membership organization representing the leaders of the global travel and tourism industry. The mission is to maximize the inclusive and sustainable growth potential of the travel and tourism sector. In some examples, coming through. Again, this is Christopher, your virtual guide for our heritage tourism. Keep wondering and see you again. The National Historical Commission of the Philippines, also known as NHCP, and its mission is the promotion of Philippine history, 
and cultural heritage to research dissemination, conservation, site management, and, pre- and preservation works such as it aims to inc- inculcate awareness and appreciation of the ideas of our heroes and other outstanding Filipinos to instill the pride of history. In the present day, NHCP was established in 1972. The next one. Limits of acceptable change. It is described here as a as a management method for protected areas, but yet it additionally works for social resources. The, the key here is to characterize the ap- appro- appropriate limits. And uh, last, the social cultural carrying capacity. This is where the maximum level of use that can be absorbed by an area without an unacceptable decline in the quality of, of experience of visitors. Also, the maximum number of visitors who can be physically present at a certain time and place and if a population exceeds carrying capacity, the ecosystem may become unsuitable for the species to survive. For example, um, there's a high number of visitors to visit in a forest. So, if mas maraming visitors, uh, mas, mas malaki yung produce na, na air, air pollution from humans. And because of that, pwede siya maka-affect sa pag, uh, pag-circulate ng, ng, ng ecosystem ng mga species na nakatira doon. World Heritage Convention, this is a convention concerning the protection of the world cultural and natural heritage. So this convention also aims to promote cooperation among nations to protect the heritage among the world that is of such outstanding universal value that its conservation is important for current and future generations. So world heritage sites are cultural and or natural sites of outstanding universal value which are also important across countries and generations. So this represents unique are the most significant or best example of the world's cultural and natural heritage. Uh, this title is often used to name a heritage site inscribed by UNESCO as a world heritage property. So a world heritage property, these are places that are important to and belong to everyone no matter where they live. So they have a recognized universal value as well that goes beyond the value they hold for a particular nation. This is also a term used by UNESCO's World Heritage Committee and by the World Heritage Convention which uh, refers to World Heritage sites that receive their title as they carry an outstanding and universal cultural value. Hello, my name is Noami from BSTM 5B. I will discuss a little knowledge about heritage tourism. First, we have Philippine Heritage Project. It is a campaign that envisions to inform, persuade, and convince local and international tourists to experience our country's history from past to present. Usually created by developing an integrated marketing communication campaign, market the Philippines cultural assets, create local distinctiveness, and create publicity and public interest for cultural tourists. Meanwhile, the World Tourism Organization or WTO is like the sister company or the specialized agency of the United Nations, which is in charge of promoting responsible, sustainable, and globally accessible tourism. They also work to make tourism an effective tool for development through technical assistance projects in over 100 countries around the world. Thank you for listening. Good day everyone, I'm Hazel Katingala from BSTM 5B. So for today's video, I'm going to discuss about UNWTO or the World Tourism Organization. The World Tourism Organization is the leading international organization in the field of travel and tourism. It serves as a global forum for tourism policy issues and a practical source of tourism know-how. Its membership includes 138 countries and territories and more than 350 affiliate members representing local government, tourism associations, and private sector companies, including airlines, hotel groups, and tour operators. 
with its headquarters in Madrid, WTO is an intergovernmental body entrusted by the United Nations with the promotion and development of tourism. We all know that we are facing an unprecedented global health emergency. The containment of the pandemic is the utmost priority and the tourism sector is committed to support all measures taken to curb the outbreak. UNWTO is working closely with the World Health Organization, its member states, and the industry to ensure a coordinated and effective response. We know we need strong support in navigating the unparalleled social and economic impact of COVID-19. In the immediate, we need urgent fiscal and monetary measures that help protect jobs, sustain the self-employed, and support companies. Liquidity and operations and accelerate recovery in the future. Tourism is a major job creator, especially for more vulnerable groups, women and youth. It is also a sector with proven capacity to bounce back and multiply recovery to other sectors. Coordinated and strong mitigation and recovery plans to support the sector can generate massive returns across the whole economy and jobs. WTO assessments. Over the last decades, tourism has become one of the leading socio-economic sectors in the world today. In 2012, for the first time in history, over 1 billion international tourists traveled the world in a single year. Yet, 1 billion is not just an impressive number, it means immense opportunities for development through job creation, businesses, for small and medium enterprises, improvement of livelihoods, renewal of places and communities, and the promotion of natural and cultural heritage if tourism is properly managed. To ensure that tourism is used effectively as a tool for cultural pre preservation, UNWTO is working closely with the UNESCO World Heritage and Sustainable Tourism Program to create an international framework for sustainable tourism management at World Heritage Sites. To ensure that tourism is used effectively as a tool for cultural preservation, UNWTO is working closely with the UNESCO World Heritage and Sustainable Tourism Program to create an international framework for sustainable tourism management and World Heritage Sites. UNWTO strives to promote tourism development that supports in equal measure the conservation of biodiversity, the social welfare, and the economic security of the host countries and communities. The UNWTO International Network of Sustainable Tourism Observatories is a network of tourism observatories monitoring the economic, environmental, and social impact of tourism at the destination level. UNWTO has been at the forefront of recognizing the important dimension and the role of tourism as a positive instrument for the promotion of cultural identity in host societies, the alleviation of poverty, and the improvement of the quality of life for all people, its potential to make a contribution to economic and social development, especially in developing countries and its emergence as a vital force for the promotion of international understanding, peace, and its prosperity. These principles of sustainable tourism and responsible tourism are enshrined in the Global Code of Ethics for Tourism. The World Tourism Organization is regularly preparing reports for the General Assembly of the United Nations providing updates on sustainable tourism policies, 
both from UNWTO member states and states members of the United Nations as well as relevant agency and programs of the United Nations system. Thank you for watching the video till the end. But before ending this video, let's do a recap. Heritage tourism is a branch of tourism oriented towards the cultural heritage of a location where tourism is occurring. It is traveling to experience the places and activities that authentically represent the stories and people of the past and the present. For centuries, people or vi visitors have traveled across the world they flock to historical places to understand the impact of the past generations that has been preserved and developed through time and pass on posterity. It is not just focusing on the places or des destination, but it also refers to the cultural aspects like monuments, traditions, practices, languages, culture, architecture, cuisine, craft, literature, music, arts, and customs. There are two types of heritage, cultural and natural heritage. Cultural heritage includes historical buildings, monuments, collections of information on how people live, like photos, paintings, stories, and more. While natural heritage is travel featuring cultural environments such as mountains, rivers, and any landscapes. It is also called intangible and tangible heritage. A tangible heritage means it is perceptible, touchable, concrete, or physical. While intangible is the opposite of tangible, or it is not a physical or concrete item, it exists intellectually. The importance of heritage tourism is it, it helps us examine our history and traditions. It helps us understand and explain why we are the way we are. A meaningful source of identity and inspiration for communities across the country and it is a keystone of our culture that plays an important role in politics, society, business, and worldview. It could play an even bigger role in getting tourists to visit our country. There are benefits that we could get through our cultural and heritage tourism. It injects new money into the economy. It creates new jobs, business, events, and attractions that helps diversify the local community. It promotes the active preservation and protection of local traditions, customs, and culture. It also helps improve the community's image and pride. It also provides research, education, and work placement and creates enjoyable opportunities also have programs and organizations that preserve, develop, and promote our heritage. Those programs are the NHCP, which stands for National Historical of the Philippines. It is responsible for the conservation and preservation of the country's historical legacies. The Philippine Heritage Project is a campaign to, to envision to inform, persuade, and entice local and international audiences to experience the country. The WTO, or World Tourism Organization, is United Nations specialized agency entrusted with the promotion of responsible, sustainable, and universally accessible tourism. Department of Tourism is the primary government agency charged with the responsibility to encourage, promote, and develop tourism as a major socio-economic activity. The HCS, or Heritage Conservation Society, is a non-stop, non-profit organization advocating the protection and preservation of our built heritage, culture, and her historical sites and settings. The World Heritage Convention is one of UNESCO's most well-known and emblematic instruments. Adopted at the UNESCO General Conference in 1972, it was ratified in 2017 by 193 countries. And if a heritage site is inscribed by UNESCO, the title of the news to name it is World Heritage Site as a World Heritage Property. Heritage is our legacy from the past, what we live with today, and what we pass on the future generations. 
Our cultural heritage and natural heritage are both irreplaceable sources of light and inspiration. Culture is an attribute that binds a particular society and it is also a way of life. And that is all for the recap. Thank you for watching. We hope you have learned something new with our video. Hope to see you again.